Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. The big bookcase is all finished. It was a lot of work, but as you can see, it was worth it. I finished part 4 by making all the doors moldings. Now I have to finish the bookcase. Even if the moldings are done, the doors still need a bit of sanding. The top was done a long time ago, but now I need to fix it in place. I begin by making sure it's centered. When I'm satisfied, I clamp it in place. Then I can mark where to drill the assembly screws and drill them. Like all the other assembly screw holes, I begin with a bigger hole the size of the screw, followed by a smaller pilot hole. Then I can screw them in place. <laughs> okay, screwing in hardwood is not that easy. I put six screws to keep the top in place. After all this, we disassemble the bookcase and put the lower section on the workbench. Then I cut a back for the drawer section. And screw it in place. Then on all the sides, I cut a rabbit for the backs. Before reassembling all this, I give it a nice sanding of 220 grit on all the sides and cut the top to the right width. I also sand the two horizontal surfaces up to 220 grit. Then we reassemble the lower section. Now I'm able to make the shelves holes. I begin by cutting a piece of melamine to act as a spacer. Then it's possible to drill the holes for the bottom shelves. Next, I can cut the two remaining backs for the bottom section and we can reassemble the bookcase. Then it's time to drill the shelves holes of the top section. I need three rows of holes to accommodate the two sizes of glass shelves. For this, I clamp a piece of plywood at the back, which acts as a spacer for the drilling jig. And it's a go for another row of holes. Since my jig only has six holes, I need to use the indexing pin to continue drilling more of them. I have more than 500 holes to drill for the top section. This takes a while. Next, I can take care of the remaining two backs.
Now that all the backs are done, I can cut the four shelves. I've already glued the solid edging before, but they're in two sections. So I need to make the first cut right in the center of this. Then it's possible to cut the first shelf to the right width. Here it is, the first shelf. It's time to take care of the other one. The last thing to do on the two bottom shelves is to cut them to depth. I also have two more shelves to cut for the central section. I take some measurements and cut them. Here they are, <laughs> but obviously they're too long, so I need to cut them. And with these cuts, all the cutting is finished. But not the bookcase. I need to resand everywhere with the linear sander. I like to make the final sanding following the grain of the wood. A linear sander is the ideal tool for the job. Also break all the corners at the same time. After several hours of sanding, I'm ready to apply the finish. Uh, well, uh, almost. I need to vacuum and clean everywhere thoroughly. Then I can begin wiping the stain. I don't usually stain my pieces, and I've never stained such a big project before. This took an eternity. I also had to be creative to lay the pieces around the shop so the stain would dry. As a matter of fact, after six hours, I had half of it stained and no place to lay the rest of the pieces. So I leave it all like that for the night. The next day, I continue standing. Each vertical piece takes a while to stain. <laughs> yes, it's because I also brush some stain inside each hole, and as you know, I have more than 500 of them. But I'm lucky because the rest is pretty straightforward. After another six hours, I managed to finish standing the bookcase. The next day, I started to spray the varnish. I asked René to be close by, just in case I needed some help moving something around. Spraying is not super fast, but it's faster than wiping stain. After a while, I have the same problem. No more place to lay the sprayed pieces around. So I managed to spray about mm, half of the bookcase. The next morning, the varnish is dry, so I can lightly sand it. This way, I'm removing all the imperfections of the finish. I sand all the large surfaces with the linear sander, but the edges are done with a scrub pad. While I'm sanding this, René is cleaning what I've already sanded. After all this, I can spray the second coat of varnish.
and leave this to dry until the next day. Then we move all the varnished pieces inside the house and I spray the first coat on all the remaining pieces. We leave this to dry another night, sand everything and on the fourth day spray the last coat of varnish. Now that everything has two coats of varnish, it's possible to install the glass pane in the doors. The glass is just a bit smaller than the opening. Now I just have to pin the quarter rounds in place. I just have to be careful not to hit the glass. In the end, I had no problem installing the glass. Now we're going to reassemble the whole bookcase. I really don't want any surprises on the day of the delivery. When the lower section is assembled, before putting it on the ground, I stick some slippery tape at the bottom of the drawers. This really helps a drawer to slide easily. And we continue the assembly. After a little bit less than two hours, here's the result. We just have to disassemble it, pack it, and deliver it. Assembling it on site was not as fast. It's true that I have to give some information on how to assemble it. René and I did this dozens of times, so we knew what to do. In the end, I drill some holes for the poles on the doors and drawers. Here's the big bookcase in place in its new home. Fred was super happy, and so was I. This was far from being a weekend project. I worked on this for four months. Okay, uh, not every day, only 58 days over four months for a total of 240 hours. But when I look at the result, I'm happy. This bookcase can all be taken apart but it's far from looking like an IKEA piece. I hope you've enjoyed watching the five parts of this build, because I also went all in for filming this. I recorded over 51 hours with more than 1800 clips. And this is not even counting the hundreds of hours editing those five episodes. And I hope to see you again soon for the next episode of The Woodpecker.